Hi, Azalea here signing in for the BFN, the Business Financial Network. Today, our channel is excited to launch a new series called The Blockchain Buzz, as we are committed to keeping our viewers in the know regarding undiscovered, undervalued, underexposed brand new asset classes and emerging issuers in the world's markets. Know that all the information shared here is for entertainment purposes only. So please make sure you do your own research and due diligence and consult with a licensed professional before making any financial choices. Thank you to all our viewers for all your support and commitment in building your investment and trading confidence. Stay tuned as we share up and coming innovations in the ever expanding blockchain sector. We will be taking on complex blockchain cryptocurrency topics for purposes of breaking them down and translating them into plain English. So to keep on winning, you got to keep on watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to immediately get notified when a new video comes out. So let's get right into it. Good day, this is Azalea on behalf of the Business Financial Network. What is the blockchain technology. Is it the next big thing? Well, today's topic is the blockchain and its innovations in the world of technology. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what blockchain technology is and why it's the future of finance. Before we understand how blockchain technology works, we need to understand what problems it was designed to solve. Let's take a step back. Are you missing out on a once in a lifetime opportunity? How does blockchain make transactions more secure? What is wrong with our current financial system? Take a look at these. How do we tell if something is fake or legit in today's world? For example, a dollar bill, a driver's license, a passport, a vote in an election, how do we determine whether it's valid or not? We keep a record of it. Dollar bills have a serial number recorded by issuers or banks. IDs are recorded by government agencies as are votes. They are determined if someone has or hasn't voted or did so more than once. Now, when you want to check to see if important documents are legit, you look it up by relevant authorities who validate information. Notaries, they are people that are licensed by the government to witness, make record, and attest to the validity of identities and pieces of information. There's one common theme amongst these verifying mechanisms, and that is they're all centralized which means there's a central authority, whether it's a bank or government office, really a person that has the power to sign off on the validity or the information, identity, or a transaction. Central authorities have a lot of power, and I'm sure you're all aware power can corrupt. That being said, what if one of these authorities want to change some facts, or let's say history? As you know, history is only information stored in a centralized format. The phrase, history is written by its victors, depicts that history has already been written by those in power. If you think this is far-fetched, I ask you all to look into the 2008 financial crisis. Consider that all the money we have in circulation today is a record of who owes what on a world scale. And then in 2008, the entire institutional ledgers were wiped clean. After that, a whole bunch of money was created and given out under the term bailout. Some people argued that this was justified. However, you can't deny that someone decided to change the record of who owned and is owed. Enter Bitcoin as the first form of money or currency that removed the need for a centralized authority. Decentralized means its records are kept by everyone, not just central banks or governments. When records are kept by everyone, 
No one can just go and change the records without anyone else noticing that something is altered. You may think that decentralization is exclusive to finance. However, it's not. Do you remember Britannica Encyclopedia, which at one time was considered an authority? Imagine the powers its editors and contributors had to include, condone, or ignore certain contents. Well, Britannica stopped producing its last edition in 2010, and now the world's biggest decentralized research tool, the internet, allows users access to reliable information like never before. Let's take a look at this video. Traditional finance and decentralized finance. What you need to know. What is traditional finance? It's what we're used to, like banks and other financial institutions that act like the middleman. There's you, the middleman like your bank, some form of payment channel like Visa or MasterCard, the recipient's bank, and the recipient. Now what's decentralized finance? It essentially accomplishes the same purpose as traditional finance, but without the financial institution. There's you and the recipient. No middleman and a transaction is done on the blockchain. What is a blockchain? A blockchain is an immutable timestamp series record of data that is distributed and managed by a cluster of computers. There are many aspects of the blockchain we can dive into, but we'll save that for another video. So what is the difference between traditional finance and decentralized finance? Let's look at the trust source. The trust source for decentralized finance is public blockchains. Records are kept simultaneously across thousands of computers where all transactions are publicly auditable. There is no core authority. Every participant in the network can access the history of transactions. While traditional finance trust source is public governance framework composed of laws, licensed financial institutions, and financial authorities. There is a core authority which only privileged users or institutions can access. Another difference are barriers. Decentralized finance is a more open system, meaning it's more transparent and doesn't have many barriers, which allows for innovation and ease of entry. Unlike traditional finance, which is heavily regulated. We are still in the early days for the use of digital ledger technologies. This concept of decentralized finance shows mass potential and has what it takes to revolutionize the financial sector. As you can see, decentralization reduces, perhaps even eliminates the risk of corruption, fraud, and manipulation. We want to say thank you. Without each and every one of you, we as a group would not be where we are today. Thank you for your support and your kind words of encouragement and believing in us. Most importantly, believing in yourself. We have one goal this year, and that is to inspire as many of you as possible to take back control, starting with your trading confidence, emotional intellect, and also to inspire others to find the courage to make that same commitment into self-discovery. I invite you to keep on watching, to keep on winning. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your alerts. This is Azalea signing off at the BFN Business Financial Network. Stay blessed.